Carolyn Imnida and welcome to the channel Oh Carol! For today's video, let's talk about the process and how to get your F61 visa or the Korean spouse visa. And if you're interested to know more, please keep on watching. I will be talking about the requirements with the details from my own experience here at the bottom corner because the documents are more important for you to see than my face, right? Let's begin. Here is the updated list from the website Embassy of the Republic of Korea in the Republic of Philippines. So I'll just show you the link and I'll link it down the description box below. Once you click that link, you will be directed to the spouse visa requirements F61 visa that was updated last January 3rd, 2022. So click first the PDF file entitled spouse visa requirements. So here it is. Then it will be an English version. So that will be very good for Pinais or the foreigner spouse of the Korean. So just a tip. Follow the right order of the documents when submitting to the embassy. What we did is we used some color coding tapes wherein we could write the numbers like 1-1, 1-2, and so on. And some documents also have more than one page, so I highly recommend you use paper clips to put them together. Everyone loves organization here, especially the people from the embassy. So let's start from the basic requirements. So as you can see, 1-1 until 1-5, those are the requirements the Pinay or the foreign spouse should prepare, not the Korean spouse. So let's start with 1-1. This is the visa application form. You will find this at the embassy or the High Korea website. It's better if you print it out because you have to fill out some pages, not just one page. So you can get this. I will show you how it looks like and also where to get it. Okay, then if you don't know some information needed, you may leave it blank and just make sure to ask the embassy personnel how to answer that part. Next, let's go to 1-2. So this is the passport size picture. So it has to be white background because that's what I saw in the embassy for their guidelines. You will attach this in your visa application form. So I highly suggest that you get around four to five copies of this because this will also be used during your medical exam. Now let's go to 1-3, the original passport of the applicant, your passport. So the only important thing to remember, it has to be valid at least six months. And you have to photocopy the bio page. So the bio page is this part. If you're confused, this is my husband's passport, by the way. You cannot see any information because I'm too far. Well, anyway, this is the bio page. Okay, and 1-5, the visa application fee. That is 2,000 pesos. You will pay this after the embassy has checked all the documents you've sent and there's nothing missing so after paying the 2000 pesos that's the time they will give you the receipt with the release date and let's continue let's go to 1-6 and 1-7 these are very important letters according to my husband because these are the invitation and the guarantee letter so it must be filled up by the Korean spouse in Hangul. You can check it out in the website and this is how it looks like, the two letters. Then 1-8. This is the personal details form. Must be filled up by you, the Pinay spouse or the foreign spouse in English. So I'll just show you how it looks like and where you could get this form. I'm sorry if there is a background noise. It's currently raining. 
So let's continue. Let's go to 1-9 to 1-13. These are basic documents to be prepared by the Korean spouse. For confidentiality purposes, I cannot show the documents of my Korean husband, but definitely your husband know where to get it. So it's in www.gov.kr. So do not use the Minwen website because it's outdated according to my husband. So he, ha he has to get one copy each in Korean issued within three months. Now let's go to 1-14 and 1-15. So these documents actually have exemptions. Let's have certificate for marriage guidance program, 1-14. There's actually no need to submit for those exempted refer to number one so you can go down scroll a bit you're exempted if the couple can prove that they were in a relationship while the korean was staying in the philippines for more than six months or stay in a third country continuously with a long-term visa such as student or working visa so my husband and i were able to be exempted because of this reason my husband stayed here for more than a year and how to prove that you can actually get that document in the embassy you just have to pay around 100 pesos exactly 100 pesos so let's have 1-15 the original medical certificate again if you can do the exemption that is number two you don't need to get it so if the couple can prove that they were in a relationship while your Korean spouse entered and stayed legally in Korea for at least 91 days with a long-term visa, then he doesn't need to get this. But if not, then you can get it in the hospital or public health center in Korea. Now, going to the basic documents to be prepared by the foreign spouse or the Pinay. So, let's go to the 1-16, the original PSA marriage certificate or the PSA Sanomar. So, if you got married in the Philippines, then you need to submit the PSA marriage certificate. And if you didn't get married in the Philippines, then you need to submit the PSA Sanomar. In our case, we submitted our PSA marriage certificate and actually we were able to expedite the releasing of our marriage certificate with the help of our local registry. If you know how we did it, I'll make a separate video about that. We were able to get it in just one month. What we heard, it usually takes around six months or a year to get your marriage certificate. But we were on the processing of our visas, so we really wanted to expedite everything. Now let's have 1-17. That's the original PSA birth certificate. So the PNAI, you can just get it. You can order it. But for my case, I just book an appointment in PSA. I got mine in Cebu branch. So it's easier because you really don't have to wait and it's way cheaper. Next is 1-18, the original police record. NBI clearance. It should be issued within three months. Now, there is an exemption. So refer to number three. Let's go down, scroll down. So number three for police record for foreign spouse submission is waived if the korean spouse is exempted from certificate for marriage guidance program so as i mentioned a while ago we are exempted for the marriage guidance program so i don't need to submit the original police record next let's go to 1-19 so this is the original medical certificate let's refer to number four so for medical certificate you should be issued within six months it should be issued within six months from the application date so shouldn't go beyond that and should be typewritten or computerized with the hospital name the hospital address the hospital contact number the physician signature and one tricky part of it it was shared by one of our good friend that he had and he had to go back to the hospital because as a the picture 
the passport picture that I mentioned a while ago, they will use it for your medical certificate too. And there should be a seal. There is a seal on your medical certificate and your picture should also have the seal. So that's how they see how authentic your medical certificate is. So other than the test included in the sample for medical certificate is the TB result. It should be included. If the Korean spouse is exempted from the marriage guidance program certificate of foreign spouse, it's also waived. So in my case, I didn't need to get the tuberculosis test because we got the foreign spouse. Now going to the checklist, let's go to page number two, the income requirement documents of Korean spouse. So definitely this is for your spouse to prepare. So I cannot go into deeper with this, these forms. Your husband is going to figure it out for you. So let's go to number three, that's page three of the checklist. Proof of Korean language proficiency of free, the foreign spouse. So that is you, me. So please submit the documents below. If the applicant is exempted from the proficiency exemption condition and is not able to submit the requirements stated below, the applicant must take the Korean language proficiency test at the embassy. So there will be a test if you're not exempted. For those who will take the test at the embassy, the Korean language proficiency will be determined depending on the test result. So there is no need to submit below requirements if the applicant is exempted from the Korean language proficiency referred to the number one. So this was the exemption that we were able to use because my husband was able to stay here for more than a year. Anyway, let's start. So, submission of the proof for Korean language proficiency is waived. Number one, if there is a child born between the couple or if the wife is pregnant 20 weeks and above with a child between the couple. Then, number two, if the Korean spouse could submit proof of acquiring required score of English proficiency test. So this is your husband's certificate if he was able to take the TESOL, the other tests that will show that he is proficient in English language. Or the husband, the Korean husband can prove that he or she, <laughs> Korean spouse can prove that he or she has stayed for at least one year continuously in our country so or anywhere any country where english is a native or official language that includes the philippines so we were able to use that we were exempted from the test but let's continue number four if the Korean spouse has passed the English interview conducted at the embassy. So I heard before that yes, they did this, but I don't know for now because of the pandemic and also we were exempted. So we don't have any experience. And number five, if the foreign spouse has stayed in Korea with a spouse, F61 status in the past. So if the Pinoy or Pinay, had an F61 visa before, so no need to take the test anymore. So this is not applicable if the Korean spouse is different or if Korean spouse is the same but marriage was discontinued. It has to be the same Korean spouse. Okay, so the required English proficiency test score for TOEIC is at least 785. For T, TFAL and so on, you can just read this part i'm not very familiar with this one because first and foremost we were exempted okay now let's have number two if the couple communicates with a third language if the couple communicates with language other than korean or english please inquire at the embassy so for example i taught my husband how to speak bisaya or tagalog and there's an exemption but that is to be determined 
by the embassy. So for us, we didn't have to worry about that. So I'm so sorry if I can't go deeper into 3-1 and 3-6 because I have no personal experience or knowledge about this. Now let's head to page 4. Number four, residential requirement document of the Korean spouse. So again, this has to do something with your spouse. So he'll be the one or she'll be the one who is going to prepare this one. Next is the number five, very important, the proof of courtship. So five dash one, commonly required. So you have to have documents to prove the course of courtship or authenticity of your marriage. This is very important because they will see how your relation was. Was it true? Because if there were a picture, there were documentation, then of course you can prove it. So you have to submit A4 paper format with maximum of five pages. Yes, only five pages. I know you have a lot to show to prove your relationship, but just limit it into five pages. The contents must be prepared freely, your style such as the date, the pictures, the family pictures, and the SNS communication history. So for me, I prepare this personally. So I prepare pictures from Instagram with the dates, pictures from Facebook, of course, with the dates, our video calls with the date, and also some of our messages that we done, did through Kakao and also Messenger. So that's 5.45-1. Now let's have 5-2 and 5-3. If you were introduced by an agent legally registered under Korean marriage law, or if you were introduced by a relative or friend, we did not do this part because no, we were not introduced by anyone. We met at work. So let's move on. And by the way, before we move on, I mean, there is an exception to prove the introduction or prove your relationship if there is a child born between the couple or if the foreign spouse has stayed in Korea with the spouse visa status in the past. Again, it has to be the same Korean or your marriage was not discontinued. So you'll be exempted for this. Now let's go to the fifth page of this list. So this is the list of the requirements for the cases, the special cases that will grant you exemptions. So case number one, if you are pregnant or there is a child born between the couple so there is a list of the requirements that will be re re exempted and also you need to provide next list of requirements for exempted from the korean marriage guidance program like how we got exempted so there are documents will be exempted and also there are documents you need to present to meet that exemption now let's also talk about those foreign spouses that had stayed in korea before so those are the f61 visa status holder in the past so there are also requirements, so you will get the exemptions. And on the last part of the list, the sixth page, these are just the precautions. So what are the requirements? How are they valid? Until when? So just kindly read that page. And now as for the timeline, basically your Korean spouse can start collecting the documents in Korea. And for the foreign spouse or Pinoy or Pinay spouse, you can also start 
getting your documents while waiting for your foreign or your Korean spouse. So for us, we had to wait for the marriage certificate that took a month and then we registered it to Korea. Then we also took a break because we were so busy for the past few months. We got so exhausted. So we started our processing. We went to the embassy in Cebu. By the way, the address is in China Bank Building, Cebu Business Park. When you go there, you'll just go directly to the 12th floor. And please remember that the visa application is from 9 a.m. only until 11.30 a.m. They will have a break and they will reopen at 2 p.m. But 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. is only for the releasing of the visa. So when we went there on a Monday, we arrived already in the lunch break. And we were told by their very polite guard that it's only releasing in the afternoon. So we had to go back. So we went back there on a Tuesday, finally made it, prepared everything, presented our documents. Then it took a while because the staff really checked thoroughly everything. And then later on, we found out that there were two missing documents. So. The document that will show how long my husband has stayed here. So you can get that on the next window. The visa issuance is on the third window. And the next window, the second window, you can get that document. You have to pay the 100 peso that I mentioned from a while ago. And then the other document that I was missing was my medical certificate because we weren't really sure about the designated tuberculosis hospitals. And we weren't sure what tests we are really getting because we have to provide first the document needed for us to be exempted for the tuberculosis test. And then we can get the simple test like the x-ray and so on so after getting an exact information about which test i'll be getting we went on wednesday to Cebu doctors hospital to get my medical certificate and also my chest x-ray after a long day in the hospital it was very tiring we got the document with the seal that's very important so finally on july 21st we came back to cebu embassy and we were able to complete all the documents now we just have to pay for the fee which is two thousand pesos so i paid her the two thousand pesos she gave me a receipt and the releasing date and then she mentioned uh, this will take 15 days uh, we were expecting actually 10 days, but nothing we can do. 15 business days. So it's really a long wait. So we waited for 15 days. We were told to wait. Then after getting the receipt, she also gave me two more documents. These documents are just a yes, no document. Like, am I aware of my husband? Like basic information they were just very simple question i even forgot already anyway after that i submitted those two documents to her and then she said this document that you just submitted right now answered right now are actually the documents that will be sent to manila too because we need to verify your marriage all your documents and also we will talk what do you call this mm, we will coordinate with bsa with your marriage certificate and so on so that's it so we just waited and the waiting game starts so when you go to the website because she gave us the link to that i'll also show it to you 
I can also link it in the description box below. I didn't know the proper way on how to find the information. So what I did is I gave the passport, I input the passport, my name, my last name, first name, and middle name, and then my birth date. Nothing showed for you. three days. So I was already getting anxious. And then later on, I saw the lower part of the website. There is a guide on what format of the name you should input. So it should only be last name and first name. There shouldn't be middle name. So I tried again. And finally, there's my name. There's my application. So the status was application received. So I did that checking almost every day. Yes, every day I check the website. You know when you're waiting for something and you just want to get over it and find the results right away? Anyway, I did that until the last day. Well, I have a group on Facebook where they have many updates about visa application. And then they mentioned that most of the changes happen the day before your release date. And my release date was August 10. So I can only expect it to change around August 9. So that's today. Today, I was very anxious in the morning. I didn't sleep well because I keep on checking it. And then around 1 p.m., I checked it. It's still application received. So maybe later tonight, it will change into under review. So while eating, I checked it again. That was already around 3 p.m. And there, I wasn't expecting anymore, but there it was. My visa has been approved. Yeah, so my visa has been approved and I will be going to the embassy tomorrow to claim my visa and also my passport. That's why you can get the certificate already on the website for your visa. But your passport is still in the embassy, so you really have to go back on your release date. So, I will get that and I will try to make a video to show you how it looks like in person. So, that will be all for today. And last tip, don't forget that the next step is for you to get your CFO. So this is a certificate that will be asked by the immigration officer before a Pinori migrates or go to another country. For cases like your spouse, you really need a CFO. So do not book a flight unless you get a visa and a CFO yet. That's the safest. So I will try to make another video about how to get your CFO, the whole process, so that you could also be guided in how to do it. So that will be all. If you have watched until now, thank you so much. And I hope you've learned something from this video. And I'm hoping to answer any questions you'd like to ask. So just comment down in the sec comment section below. And I will see you on the next video. Have a wonderful day and eat the bio.